Hello, hello, hello. It's Stephanie here and welcome to this episode of the Rent to Rent Success podcast. I'm so excited to be here today with Fabian Miller. Miller. Fabian is a property stylist at Fabian Interior. She's a trainer and international award winner of Home Best Staging Transformation 2022. Highly deserved. I got to know Fabian because I see all her posts on Facebook with gorgeous interiors. And what I love is, as well as the more high-end stuff, Fabian also does really Uh, cost-effective interiors for property investors, for service accommodation and for HMO. And she produces these really welcoming, homely interiors that make people happy. That's what makes her passionate. And I love that she's got a different sort of background in chemistry and in corporate management, which gives her a different way of approaching interior design that's very workable for us property investors. So Fabian Miller, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tiffany, for having me. <laughs> yeah, we love having your luscious French accent on the show. <laughs> is, that, is that why you got me on the podcast? <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> I think you're, I, I want to say you're the first French person we've had on. So, um, but you tell us your story, Fabian. How did you go from where you were to becoming an interior designer? Yes, yeah, so as you uh, as you mentioned, I, the, the background has nothing to do with what I do now. But I th- still think it's probably part of the story because what my background in you know more technical, scientific kind of a, um, uh, industry, what it has given me is more structure. So mm. I think how I approach a more creative uh, arena is is a bit different, I suppose. So my my background, so I worked, yes, in the the drink industry. I was a project manager for many years. And then I had kids. And then, you know, you uh, you had to redefine yourself a tiny bit. (laughs) So uh, this is when I started kind of looking for something that maybe resonated more with me and that took me quite a while so this is when i started looking into property because my uh, my brain works well with numbers as well so i started into a deal sourcing mm. and as i was doing a lot of uh, uh networking and kind of learning more about property doors starting opening different opportunities and this is how i started basically uh working as a property manager for service accommodation um provider and this is when i was asked one day there was a service accommodation that just came out and uh, it didn't look good so i was given a couple of hundred pounds i think to go pretty much at the range to try to you know (laughs) make it a bit better and um, that was my first step into really staging and that I really enjoyed. And my uh, person I was working for at that time is like, okay, what about you tackle? What about you do a, a bigger one that is completely empty? Would you like to do that? I'm like, okay, let's do that. And basically I did this project and resigned <laughs> because <laughs> I knew then that this is what I was meant to do. It was just the way I felt and how I was just flying through the whole process. And even the time and, and, and money pressure was just my excitement to the whole, to the whole thing. And yeah. Uh, yeah, so that was just literally October 2019. So if you think back, that was literally a few months before COVID. So mm. then the business became something, I mean, it was almost, I imagine, it was kind of an opportunity in some ways because what it forced me to do is to create a business that completely worked for me. And that meant, for instance, working completely remotely, which mm. I, I don't think I would have even considered. So yes, and, and through, therefore, through starting in a um, completely engaging in, in design and colors, it was in the middle of COVID, and I, uh, I started putting together this group called Property Staging Group for Investors. And there again, it was about sharing. It was about sharing the stuff that makes me happy, the colors, the, the rooms, the, the association of, of texture. And I thought, well, the stuff makes me happy. It was my happy place uh, in the evening just to kind of try to forget about the rest. And I thought maybe it, it might also bring some, uh, some joy to someone else. And I started this group, and today it's it's four thousand members in there, property investors and other interior designers, and um, yeah, a fantastic place, another another source of inspiration and ideas, and a and a platform where people can find help as well in their project. Fantastic! I I think I'm part of your group. I certainly see all the images coming up. So is it property staging group for investors? That's the one. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, so do go and check that out, guys. Because if you want to know what Fabienne's talking about, I think the way that Fabienne uses paint and so on, it's pretty unique in the property investing world anyway. And also, as I said earlier, what I like is that it's a mix of high end stuff. You maybe have some high end clients and also you do affordable things for property investors that mean the deals can still work. And the other thing you said is that you work remotely with investors, which I think is such a bonus as well, because you can work right across the UK. And what an investor needs is, OK, this is what you should buy. This is what you should tell your decorator to do. And then everything turns up and they can just um, put it in place or their team can put it in place. Yeah. And I think there's a bit of a, of a belief around the type of job I do, which is, you know, it's it's complicated. It's creative. So I think as such, it comes with a bit of the, the design heaviness almost like, OK, what is it going to be? Well, actually, um, the process is fairly simple and it's all about making life easier. It's about mm -hmm. giving all the information so that it's all there. It meets, you know, the, the uh, at the forefront, it's all about attracting, you know, your guests, your tenants, whoever you're trying to uh, to attract and giving, you know, the, my, my clients everything they need to basically just get on with it, create the interior that will help their business and, you know, increase their profit. And um, without having the hassle of really dive, having to dive into it. And often, you know, this is what I found with, uh, with clients who, who try this overwhelm often yeah. to try to put a room together when actually it's yeah. not it's not a second nature type of thing. It's something if it's yeah. not something you have learned or something that you're attracted to, it can be really hard and quite stressful, I think, to even um, yeah consider. And what's more, Fabian, the results are rubbish because <laughs> I used to think, oh yeah, I kind of, I kind of know what you know what to do with this. But you soon realise actually, you put things together that you think look okay, and they they kind of look a bit flat or something looks off. You don't even know what's going on. And then um, I was mentioning to you that we used an interior designer on some of the projects, and she said to me, you know, she told me what she was going to buy and things, and I was like, this is never going to work. You know, I don't think this is going to look good in the slightest. But I just I just let her get on with it because I thought, well, if I knew what to do, I would already be doing it. Anyway, she put it together. It looked amazing. And um, so I really believe in interior design. And I was just saying to you, I've recently moved and I'm having an interior designer. Um, well, I've asked you uh, <laughs> to help me as well. Um to do to design you know my home because I think it just adds that next level of dimension to what you're doing yeah well I, I like to think I like to think it does but the, the thing also with uh using you know property stylist or a stager or it's this thing that there's a there's an impression that there's a co you know like the cost involved to create an interior is much you know because it looks good the perception which is exactly what we try to do work on perception of value it looks great therefore it's going to be expensive but it's not it's just how you combine color how you bring things together that they don't have to and in fact I always tend to work on relatively tight tight budget mm. and often people found that when they work on their own they tend to spend much more because they they dab themselves so they end up buying more stuff changing you know where actually when you know exactly what you want or having lots of little things which is something i always say don't have little things just buy a more you know more of a statement piece something that actually has much more of an impact that little things scattered away that have actually no perceived value when you look when you look at them yeah so um i i want uh, if you're listening now, I want you to keep listening because we are going to talk about how to work with Fabian because that was what I wanted to know. How do we, how can we work with you and ballpark, you know, different investments that you might make with Fabian and how she can help you. But before we go into that, Fabian, I just wanted to come on to what are your tips for HMO styling? So with rent to rent, as you know, people are going to be doing it more on a tighter budget perhaps than if they own their own HMO. So what would you say, um, uh, give us a few of the big tips that you would say if you're styling an HMO room? 
So the, there's a few things. There's the rent to rent, which I think is quite uh, is quite important there because, as you said, what I found with clients who do rent to rent, there's a bit more pressure on not only on budget but also on time because straight away it's about you know paying the landlord. So it's always like okay, quick, 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 and cheap. So the thing I always push, and that's that is mostly on uh, on service accommodations so on rent to SA, but same principle applies. Is that often landlords are a bit reluctant to have paint on the wall, on there. So this is the first thing I try to kind of push back a bit um, because I believe that, you know, to, for you to put a, a, an interior together and really create the, the most impact you can, you want an association of furnishing and wall colors. And if I had to even make a choice between the two, it would even be the wall colors because this is what create much more of an impression. If you look at a photo or even if you mm -hmm. visit a, a room, mm -hmm. you will notice a lot more the color surrounded mm -hmm. you. And then, you know, and there's this color psychology that comes into play, but mm -hmm. how it makes you feel rather than maybe a couple of prints on the wall. So if mm -hmm. I had to pick between the two, it would be paint versus furnishing. So mm -hmm. what I'm trying to say here is that the, the first thing I would really push, and I do push that with rent to rent uh, client is to try to challenge the landlord with this idea of not being able to paint the, the walls or if it's all right, then paint mm -hmm. the walls is the first call of action because this is what is going to help you to create an atmosphere. Mm -hmm. You mentioned about your, um, you, your, your interior designer who worked for you that she was compartmenting a bit the room mm -hmm. and this is what paint helps you to do. It helps you just to kind of segment some of the, you know, uh, zone in the room that makes it more, yeah. create more, Basically, what it does, it helps you to visualize yourself in the room, yeah. sitting in the corner with your cup of coffee, with a you know on a nice chair, and then you can go on the on your bed, or you can go. You know, it's all about creating different um, different lifestyle if you want, different opportunities to have a different activity if you want. And the paint, so it does that. It does also it helps you to play a bit with the space if you've got a narrow room. There's an opportunity to make it feel wider just by mm -hmm. using paint. So this is why, so and, and creating trust, you were talking about, you know, the stuff I do. And I think paint is such a fab way to just, you know, bring something different and unique that, you know, on the photos or even when you enter the room, that it is different. And that mm. has power when it comes to trying to attract someone. Mm. So paint, what is the answer to this question? <laughs> Wait. Get some paint on the wall. Absolutely. And I think that's a nice, easy one. And for rent to rent in the HMO space anyway, most animals are, are happy if you paint it, absolutely delighted. Um, and many will pay for that as well. But so that's a great tip there for, for HMOs. But what you won't know as a listener is the way that um, Fabian does the paint, it creates those zones. So do go over to Property Staging Group for Investors, the Facebook group. If you search Property Staging Group for Investors, Facebook group, or if you maybe search Fabian Miller. Yeah, I, I was going to say maybe on, on project I've done, the best I try to uh, to put them on my own uh, business page. So this is uh, Fabian Interior again on, uh, on Facebook or mm -hmm. On, uh, on the website, I've got, again, Fabian Interiors. So there's, there's some examples there. Yeah, yeah. So that's uh, fabian-interiors.co.uk. Yeah. And I'll put, the link, I'll put the link in the show notes so that you can go across to Fabian's website. Um, from there, you can check out her property station group for investors. That's the Facebook group. And so, Fabian... You must see mistakes all the time, but what are you, would you say are the biggest mistakes that you see from property investors? Yeah, there's, I mean, this mistake and mistakes is just, you know, I look at, I look at photos and ultimately it's not mistake as such as how, how a room makes you feel, right? And there's things like, so there's one I always refer to, which is the size of a lampshade. And you picture this, you look at a room and you've got this relatively narrow cream, most of the time, lampshade in the middle of the room, right? That straight away, as you look at it, because it's on its own in the middle of the ceiling, so your eyes anywhere are going to be attracted to that. Because it's small, it's just already straight away gives you this impression of cheap, that it, no care has been, no attention has been put into that. Yeah. And everything I do, it's all about that. It's intention and care. And I would go even as far as talking about love. It's you want to create a place where people feel welcome. And to do that, 
you need to so back to the lampshade i always say i never buy a lampshade i never spec for a lampshade which is below 40 centimeter diameter <laughs> because that is a, that is a size that you enter a room and it feels like right okay that's nice this is you know a solid you know it looks you know some some money and you're talking the difference is probably a tenner this is this is it you don't need to spend that much mm. to create you know straight away a different feel into uh, into the room so this tiny uh tiny lampshade for me this is uh, something that i uh, i see constantly and i think it's a uh, it's, it's it's easy to change and change the uh, the impression of the room artworks being way too high <laughs> which is another one basically an artwork you want to be able to look at it at eye level you don't want to kind of you know uh, have to, to, to turn your neck you know like look up or anything so it's basically the idea is that it needs to be at eye level mm. same with television so there we go having a tv i had to do it in some project when there's no other way but if you can avoid don't put it above the, the fireplace you want to be relaxed on the sofa and having the tv relatively low i mean same applies at home you know you don't want the tv to be too high but yeah. you see these photos don't you of the tv being so high up yeah i love those because those are the ones that you would never think of well you would but um so the biggest mistake um it, it's probably something that we gave zero really thought to the high the ceiling lampshade we would just go and get a load of them um as you said those thin ones um and I really love that about minimum 40 centimeters diameter. So I'm sure we can see examples of that over on your page. Yeah. And then and the other same, one. And, and same, I would say, even for, um, it, again, it's all, you know, there is a sense of its perception of value, right? Mm -hmm. And um, same for a uh, bedside, bedside lamp. So, you know, you can go to Dunelm and buy one for eight pounds, which is going to be, you know, probably below, you know, 20 centimeter, this, 20, this tiny thing. You don't want to be in the bed. <laughs> I don't want to. <laughs> so, again, spend maybe another 20 pounds and have something that is, you know, 30, 40 centimeter, something that, you know, it feels good. It's the only thing when you're in bed pretty much that you've got near you that is of, you know, uh, a decorative kind of thing, make it count. The difference in value is so little versus how much of a difference it can make to the, mm -hmm. the look and feel of a room. I'll have to go and look on the, your website again. <laughs> I just find that surprising because the bedside tables are usually not that big. So then if you've got this huge lamp on it, no, but, but I'm not talking wide. I'm talking tall here. Oh, right. Okay. No, no, no. Okay. I'm talking tall. So, you okay. know, the one I'm talking about, I refer because I keep saying it, Dunelm, you know, I was just mentioning them, um, you know, small, you know, less than yeah. 20 centimeters, so really this small thing. Okay. Um, yeah, so same thing. I'm saying, yeah, try to have one that is a bit taller with a lampshade maybe of, uh, of color. Um, as I said, there's not many things in a bedroom, especially for an HMO. So the pieces you've got there, try to make them count. It doesn't mean spend much, spend a lot of money. Just purchase them with intention. Mm, I like it, and that just those two alone just help me see the insight and the value that you can add to people that they may never even have thought of. And there are so many of little things like that that if you buy all the pieces you were going to buy anyway, but as you said, you know they're all going to fit together and come up with that wow factor. Exactly. And it's not necessary, you know, especially when you talk about HMO, it's not necessary why, you know, when I do a project, the first thing that, you know, for me, it's the, you know, if I need to think about atmosphere, it's welcoming, yes. even before why, because that is something that even unconsciously it drives you there. You want to be there. You feel loved, you feel special, you feel welcome. Yeah, yeah. I think homely is another good word. Um, you feel at home. Um, so that those are great. So thank you for those biggest mistakes. So I hope you're not doing these skinny light shades and short uh, bedside tables, which I'm sure we I'm have sure on your podcast no one is different. <laughs> <laughs> which I know, which I know we have been guilty of. So um secrets to success. Let's talk about what give us a couple of the secrets to success that what we should uh we be doing um if we want to really 
get that homely welcoming feel that that you're talking about and be able to charge higher rents and have people feel more more special maybe stay longer so um one that again goes hand in hand with this idea of uh, of uh, homeliness it's it's harmony cohesion mm. Yeah, and the way to so again, it's kind of part of the, the mistake I see, but to me, it's, it's how you kind of really succeed in putting an interior together. It's creating a place where everything, all the rooms, feels linked somehow together. So that includes, you know, if you think of an HMO, you don't have that many rooms, you've got you know, maybe the communal area, the kitchen, the corridor, which is part of the story. Let's not forget the corridor and the uh, bathroom and red bedroom. And what I'm trying to say is as you're creating your scheme and the colors and how you're going to bring it together and even the metal finishes, the wood finishes, the style, you try basically to bring, to, to purchase and create, to purchase item and, and use colors that's going to help to make all these room kind of part of the same family. Because what you would see is room, you know, you've got the red bedroom and the, you know, and the sofa, you know, Japan was already black, so we've got like a yellow print and this and that. And they, they can there could be rooms that are completely in a different property. There's no link. And that again, even unconsciously, people not necessarily would say, Yeah, I don't really feel great there because it looks a bit uh, you know, it's it's disjointed. They wouldn't feel that, they would just not feel at home. Yes. Oh, it's the little things. And we all know ourselves, even if we're not designers or design oriented, you go in somewhere, you know, other homes or buildings and you feel at home or you don't. And you might not know why from a design perspective, you just feel that something's not quite exactly. right. Exactly. Exactly. The, the, the other thing I think that is, um, it's one that is overseen because I think when it comes to design, people often think about, yeah, colors and, and, and style and things like that. But actually, the first call of action when I go somewhere and I look at a, a, a project um, is the layout. And you, I think you mentioned yeah. that with the, the interior designer you, you had, is, yeah. um, is how the room works together, the flow. Yeah. Right? How are you going to use that room? And in yeah. fact, I've got a bit of a, a, a little story there, which is it was one of my first projects. It was just pre-COVID when I was still kind of going and doing project uh, on site. And it was an HMO. And I was called there to just refresh it. Uh, so there was few rooms that were uh, left empty. The voids, there were quite a few voids. I was called to basically try to lift it to bring some uh, better occupancy. And the first thing I did, that little, little budget again, I mean, probably not, not enough, but anyway, it was just a few walls, bit of cushion, just try to lift it. And as I entered, the first thing that shocked me was how the rooms were led, was led. It was a kitchen and the living room together. And there was no, everything was pushed against the walls. Okay, another mistake. Let's just make space. Space doesn't mean welcoming. Space means space. So what you want is create these zones that are cozy, right? And it's not about pushing everything against the wall that you're going to achieve that. So what I started doing is moving things so that, you know, the, the ta dining table was in closer to the kitchen, trying to kind of create a bit of a pass through, you know, like basically moving everything around. Yeah. And then put a few cushions and then what have you. But the main, main job I did there was really moving, changing the layout of the room. I went back after the painting was done just to check that everything was uh, was good. And I met one of the tenants and she told me, she said, oh, my God, it's you who've done that. She said, I was about to give my notice just before you came because I didn't like the way, you know, it just didn't work. And, you know, we did, you know, with the group, we were not really together. I felt a bit alone. The home doesn't feel home. She said, that's changed. Because now, the way you've put the sofa together, now we come downstairs and we talk together. I can cook. She said, I cook more. So now I'm staying. I haven't even told the, uh, my, my clients of that, <laughs> actually. Yeah. So there we go. Just, you know, and at that point, no money was even spent. It was just yeah. about, so there was a rug. I wanted to have a rug. No, it's not true. I wanted to have a rug for the, the living area to bring the sofas together. What do you so, mean no money was spent? Because you had done the painting. Yeah, but just one thing by that is that the most the more effect that she for her kind of made you know created a change for her was more how the room worked. It was not that much 
you know, the little change that were made, they were so little, it was just, you know, it was all magnolia, so I put a bit of teal in there. Um, but it was really how the room functioned. It was the layout of the room. So that her, her experience yeah. of her home changed because of what the way the room was laid out. So you moved the furniture, basically. Basically, and, yeah. And she had a totally different experience. Exactly, there. because he was bringing people together because you picture that. It was a, bro a large room. All the sofa were pushed. There was a TV. There was, you know, there was absolutely... Yeah. You could not really watch a TV and you could not even talk together. You could yeah. not do anything. <laughs> you could see. You brought it into zones. There you go. There you go. I I love that. Do you mind if I ask you, um, you said it was a small budget for the HMO. Do you mind if I ask you what it, it was? Oh, God. You're talking to, again, £200. Yeah. I, I could, I just oh, bought wow. a few prints. But yeah. that, it was one of the first projects I did. It was really yeah. about, yeah. it was all Magnolia. It was just about, and there was also some painting done. So a couple of yeah. walls were painted, but it was tiny, tiny budget, yeah. Yeah, I love that because it just shows what's possible when you've got the right eye on it. Now, I think now is a great time because if I was listening to this, um, I, I talked to you earlier and I was very keen to know all about how people can work with you. I wanted to work with you. I want to work with you. Um, but um, I know that you've got two different offerings. One is where you work with people one-to-one -one, and another is where you teach people how to do this styling and interiors themselves. So I'd love it if you would talk to us first about, well, you talk, you talk to us about what you want to do. <laughs> okay, so the, oh God, and my dog started snoring. So there we go, let me let me give him a nudge. <laughs> no, that's okay, that's okay. We can have a bit of dog snoring on the podcast. We like, we like dogs on this podcast. <laughs> A very dog friendly podcast <laughs> right so yeah the two things i do so one is more recent than the other but like any any business you kind of uh, you know evolve with it so the the first thing i do is like you said the one-to-one -one. so it's helping property investors to basically bring spaces together so it's all remote um the way i uh, i've kind of segmented it it's the first thing i offer it's kind of a consultation and this is often to get people started so typically it's a client to come to me and it's like, I've got all this, you know, I've got these ideas, I have these colors, I, 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 overwhelmed, don't know where to start, just too much. So it's for me, it's just basically trying to take what is often a bit of a little mess of things, <laughs> extract and kind of just guide them to kind of just define some of these elements, the colors, the wood, the kind of the, the general atmosphere, just clarify what we're trying to attract, what we're trying to do there just having a clear vision to just let them fly. So that is the first thing I do. And it's lovely because sometimes just through, a, it's, it's, it's a couple of hours, basically. One hour where we, um, uh, well, one hour where I kind of work on what I've been given and the other hour where I kind of almost coach uh, the person. The, the other two things I do, it's either I do um, what I call decorating plan. So I put together a color scheme based on always who we're trying to attract the nature of the property, I look a bit at the competition, what's the location. There's a lot of stuff that comes into play. And this is why all the decisions are kind of, there's an intention behind. It's never kind of just plug some colors and put them together. Um, so once the color scheme is approved, I put together visuals for all the rooms where the paint is going to go. And this is what's going to be given, given to either the painter or sometimes clients paint themselves for them to, uh, to do that job. And the last part is the, the shopping list. So I would basically put together an Excel spreadsheet with all the items that need to be purchased based on a budget that would have been agreed. And it's for them to basically do the, the purchase online. So this I, is the first part, which is the most kind of, you know, the, the property style is kind of a part of the job. I love it. So you, those are the one-to-one -one elements. Exactly. And it's all, so it's, it's most of them are remote. So I need, which always surprise people, you know, that you can do this kind of job, not yeah. by, you know, even entering the room. So I need yeah. floor plans, I need videos. I, um, uh, yes, and photos basically to be able to do my, uh, my visual and just gauge the, the room. I always, at the end of it, when it's, when it's dressed, I kind of also give what I call like a virtual staging. So it's a video with the client where I go through, you know, where the cushion have been put, all the tiny details at the end, just to make mm -hmm. sure that we're super ready for the, the photo shoot. 
And the, hey, uh, I love that. I love that you do that afterwards and just make sure do all the tweaking. The photo shoot is so important because yeah. that is one of the what well, that's one of your strongest assets in your business if your product is that room then one of your strongest assets is those photos because that's what really sells the room 80 percent of the selling is through the photos on absolutely this is you know this is a, a phrase i use a lot which is you know it is your it, it's your biggest marketing tool this mm. is the stuff that's going to excite people you know so exactly mm. the photos and the way you dress the all the details up to the end even how you choose your photographer you know, you want even to put a bit of attention in that to make sure that you've got a photographer who's going to give you good quality photo. Um, so, yeah, so this is the first part. And the second part, which has kind of become almost like a, as organic, organically grown, is that because I've been sharing, you know, since I started doing that, I've always been sharing ideas and ways of doing things better. And, um, and yeah, people are interested and people want to learn. And therefore, I put together this training called, what is it called again? Profit by design. There we go. Love it. <laughs> Love it. Because that's what it is. <laughs> Profit by design. Yeah. And um, it's basically was so the format, as I was mentioning to you, so I've run it twice now. Mm -hmm. It's going to move to like an online format now. But the idea is basically to structure structure way to tackle a project. And I start from, you know, the planning of it when, you know, the same way. I would look at a project and this is how I kind of basically started creating this kind of process just for my own sake, because I like to work within a framework, the control freak I am. <laughs> so, and because of my background, I think I just, I just quite like to know where I'm at, what's next, how do I make decisions? So it's about, you know, from the planning to then deciding on style and color, how to put your color, your, your, your color scheme and palette together then how do you start thinking about the, the space and how do you bring it together with the layout and with the paint? And then uh, how do you do the shopping, obviously? And then finally, how do you, you dress the room? So all these little things I talked about, you know, it's a, there's a lot more to it. It's the, the details make the design. So there's hours to talk about it, you know, and there's a, it's such, you know, the people who come to this, uh, to this training are typically property investors who, usually try to do it themselves but they realize there's a there's a there's a limitation there as you describe that actually they spend <laughs> yeah, a lot of good. time and effort and it doesn't seem to translate <laughs> yeah you think you're good and then you find out you're not good <laughs> <laughs> there we go so there's different level of that but yes in a sense um even you know i had i have even like um inter designer coming at people of different experience in design, but there's always something to learn because, as, yes. as we know, there's always something to gain there's from, you know, another point of view. Now, I just feel that everybody should do, um, all the property investors, unless yeah. you've got your own team of interior designers or you're hiring interior designers, if you're at a more uh, budget, let's say, stage, and you're not hiring somebody like Fabian to do it for you one-to-one, -one, then going on one of these uh, courses that Fabian's talking about is super uh, cost effective and they're very affordable as well and so much value is in there so I definitely urge you let's put that back on screen to go over to fabian-interiors I'll put .co.uk I'll put the link below and and just make sure you get on one of those courses now you can message Fabian if you can't see it on the website at the moment um, well, it, it is. It's just I just finished basically last night the, uh, the, 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 the live version of it and I need to yes. move to the online. So that will be updated uh, in time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so um, uh, yeah, so Fabian son that a live version and people have been having, I, I, you you talking about some of the um, reviews and testimonials earlier that people have had such amazing results. And I loved that you were able to share that story of how the interior design really impacts people's lives. Because as a property investor, you sometimes forget, you know, being a human as well. And all the experience that we've all had about the places that we've lived, maybe they've been rental properties, that when you've lived in your own home and you've tried to do it yourself and you've put things together and it didn't quite work, or you've go into somebody's home and it's all it looks like it's been designed by a professional designer and it feels really lovely. And I think that's from what you said earlier 
one of the things, uh, secrets of success is having that harmony and cohesion. And that's something that few DIY interior people like ourselves, non-professionals, manage to to get right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Exactly, exactly. So yeah, no, no, and what's and what's lovely, you see, it's it's. Uh, I teach I teach the the tools, I teach the process, and what happens at the end? And for me, this is my personal kind of pleasure. You know, ultimately, it's all about attracting more people and and you know, ultimately, um, increasing your profit and your and your return. But for me, to see the difference in people from a state of fear, reluctance, worry, you know, what color to you know to actually doing it. So I can recognize when I see their photos, I can see, okay, I can I know why they've done that. But then they put their own stamp on it. Yeah. And, you know, and they get this confidence, this clarity through, you know, understanding. Yeah. And for me, it's such a joy to see how they, you know, in life, I think the creative part is really good to just, you know, experience something different, to be able to put a room together and look at it and be like, that's nice, this is great. Plus, you offer it to people who are also going to enjoy that. So everyone wins in the process. This is what I love what I do. <laughs> yeah, and I love it because I can hear your uh, love for it and enthusiasm. And uh, what we've talked about is just from, from a business perspective, it really works for us uh, as investors. We get to really feel proud. I see people posting their projects where you've helped them, Fabian, and they're so proud of their 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 properties and they're getting great results in a business sense but also what we touched on earlier is that the housemates who live there really get a great experience as well so this is something that everybody wins from everybody benefits from and it's so cost effective whichever way you do it whether it's a one-to-one way or whether it's learning um, the skills yourself and doing uh, one of your courses Thank you. <laughs> so I just want to, uh, is there anything else that I haven't asked you about, Fabian, that you wanted to touch on before we close? No, I think, uh, I think in a sense, I mean, I was just, as you were talking, I was thinking even like the, you know, ultimately it's down to uh, to numbers. And, you know, when I work in HMO, the kind of common uh, result I get is that the first project I did, for instance, it was 10 rooms. The 10 rooms were uh, tenanted at first viewings. The next one, um, you know, they achieved the highest that was in Derby. They achieved the, the highest rate of rooms in the in town. So this is it. This is when you put this effort, it's what a difference it makes. I mean, I've got more numbers when it comes to service accommodation, mm-hmm. um, purely because I do more of, uh, of them. And you talk about doubling your revenue, you, t- you know, the impact you've got mm-hmm. in just creating something different and standing out. First of all, standing out the first thing online, you know, winning against your competition purely based on the on the photo, and mm-hmm. then you know, giving an experience that make people happy, it's huge. It's huge, and I think it's still very under uh, you know underestimated. And I would go as far as probably the best the best kept secret in the industry. And I'm yeah, very passionate, I'm very passionate about it because I see through my clients, you know, and they come back because the stuff works. Um, people love to feel good. And, and I think this particularly post-COVID, it has even increased that kind of need to feel good in the place where you yes. are. Yes, totally agree. Well, thank you, Fabian. It's been amazing having you join us. And I've loved what you've shared with us and some of those terrible mistakes we've been making with those <laughs> ceiling lights, with the bedside lamps, with having no harmony and cohesion throughout and with having these up against the walls layouts in the hopes that we're creating more space, but we're not creating homeliness. So thank you for joining us. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for watching and for listening. And I know that you'll be keen to get more from Fabian and do go over to our website, fabian-interiors.co.uk. Link will be in the show notes too, or under this video if you're watching on YouTube or on our website. So until next week, remember, have a great rest of the week and believe bigger, be bolder and be a game changer. See you soon.